spaghetti, a beloved dish across the globe, goes by many names. In China, it's simply called noodles. In Italy, it's spaghetti. But no matter what you call it, this humble pasta has earned a permanent spot on dinner tables worldwide, especially as more people embrace plant-based diets and steer away from meat. Each year, over 16 million tons of pasta are consumed globally. And to meet this massive demand, one factory in Italy has pushed the boundaries of industrial food production, churning out over 10 billion packs of spaghetti annually. So how exactly is spaghetti made on such a colossal scale? Let's step inside the world's largest pasta factory and uncover the step-by-step -step process behind this iconic global staple. This is the largest pasta factory in the world, located in Parma, Italy, the heartland of traditional Italian cuisine. This facility is a powerhouse of pasta production. Every single day, it cranks out up to 1,400 tons of noodles. Each production line alone can churn out around 10,000 pounds of pasta per hour. The operation never stops. It runs 24 hours a day, seven days a week, producing over 320,000 tons of pasta every year. That's more than 4.2 billion plates of spaghetti, enough to feed the entire world in just 18 months. Although this factory manufactures over 110 different pasta shapes and styles, today we're focusing on the one that started it all, the classic, the iconic, spaghetti. The process begins with wheat, and a whole lot of it. Truckloads arrive at the factory, each carrying up to 45 tons of durum wheat. From there, the wheat is unloaded onto a subterranean conveyor system and carried into the cleaning and sorting area. Here, powerful machines remove stones, soil, debris, and even stray seeds. Once cleaned, the wheat moves into a series of towering silos where temperature and humidity are precisely controlled to preserve quality. Together, these silos can store up to 600,000 tons of grain. In this phase, massive steel rollers crush the wheat kernels, separating the soft white endosperm from the bran and germ. The ground material is then sent to a complex screening system, where a series of mesh filters sort out the coarser bits and isolate the fine flour. Inside each screening machine, progressively finer layers sift the material, leaving behind almost pure semolina. There are eight of these high-capacity sifters in total, each capable of processing 34 tons of wheat per hour. But the job doesn't stop there. The flour must be milled and sifted repeatedly. After each round, the fine particles are removed and the coarser fragments are sent back through the rollers. This cycle continues until the flour reaches a precise particle size, around 8 mils. At that point, between 8.0 and 8.1 mils, it's considered perfect, fine enough to absorb moisture quickly and blend evenly into dough or batter. This pure golden flour is known as semolina. The recipe for dry pasta sounds almost too simple. Just mix semolina, milled from hard durum wheat, with water to form a dough. But don't let the simplicity fool you. Precision is everything here because the texture of the final product depends on it. That signature bite, the firmness, and the way it holds flavor after cooking. At this factory, about 20% of the semolina comes from Italy itself, preserving the traditional flavor of Italian pasta. The rest is imported from wheat-growing powerhouses like Canada and North America. Why? Wheat from those regions has a higher protein content, which helps create sturdier noodles with that ideal al dente chew. By blending domestic and imported wheat, the factory strikes a balance. Flavor from home, structure from abroad. Different wheat blends yield different results. Some doughs are stretchier, some are silkier. Once the ingredients are selected, it's time to mix. Every batch of semolina is weighed with precision, then fed into giant industrial mixers along with a calculated dose of water. The mixing process happens fast, very fast to prevent clumping. At this stage, the mixture doesn't look like traditional dough. It's dry, crumbly, and has the texture of damp sand. To bind and compress this loose mixture, the factory relies on a powerful screw system known as an auger. This device kneads the dough under pressure, combining water and semolina into a dense, cohesive mass. Once the dough reaches a crumbly, sand-like texture, 
It's lifted by a tiered conveyor system and sent through a series of rotating sifters. These spinning drums catch any large, undermixed clumps and reject them, allowing only the fine, evenly blended particles to pass through. This step isn't just about improving consistency. It's critical for protecting the next machine in line, the extrusion press. Any stray chunk of dough could clog or damage the high-precision equipment that shapes the pasta. If this coarse mix were fed directly into the extruder, it would compress unevenly, leaving tiny voids or cracks inside the pasta strands, a flaw that weakens the final product. To prevent that, the sifted dough is first gently compacted into small pellets. This pre-compression step helps the particles stick together just enough to be shaped efficiently, resulting in smoother, stronger spaghetti. Pelletizing the dough also forces out trapped air, and that's essential. Excess air bubbles can make the pasta brittle, causing it to break during packaging or fall apart in boiling water. And nobody wants broken, mushy spaghetti on their plate. Next, the dough pellets are gently warmed to around 91 degrees Fahrenheit, just enough to make them pliable for shaping, without actually cooking the dough. Once warmed, the pellets are funneled into the extruder, the machine responsible for giving pasta its iconic shape. Depending on the style of pasta being made, the factory swaps out different dyes known as bronzo. For spaghetti, the dye is made of bronze. Why bronze? Because it doesn't just shape the pasta with precision. It also gives each strand a rough textured surface. That texture makes a big difference. It helps sauces cling better to the noodles. As the warm, compacted dough is pressed through the metal dye, it passes through holes engineered to exact specifications. These tiny openings determine the final diameter and shape of the pasta. For spaghetti, they're long and narrow, producing thin, uniform, perfectly straight strands. And the pressure? It's intense. The dough is pushed through at more than 100 times normal atmospheric pressure, transforming it into an endless stream of spaghetti. The factory's extrusion system can produce up to 11,000 strands every single minute. That's roughly 270,000 feet of spaghetti every 60 seconds. Once the spaghetti reaches its full standard length, a rotating blade slices the strands cleanly. At the same time, a series of metal combs, functioning much like a hairbrush, neatly separate and align the noodles. The result? Wide curtains of spaghetti over a meter across, uniform and visually striking. These pasta curtains are then carefully prepared for the next critical stage, drying. Finally, the strands are gently lowered onto moving rails, where they're trimmed to an exact length of 26 inches. At this point, spaghetti still retains about 30% moisture, the perfect condition for the long, gradual drying phase that will turn it into the firm, dry pasta we all recognize. Next, the spaghetti enters the drying system, a sprawling network of metal frames that functions like a massive automated clothesline. Every hour, around six tons of pasta travel through this system, suspended in long, flowing sheets. The image is reminiscent of how spaghetti was once dried outdoors for days under the warm summer breeze of southern Italy. But today, tradition meets technology, and every detail is tightly controlled. Instead of sun and wind, the factory uses industrial-scale drying chambers, massive steel structures that consume enough electricity to power 30,000 homes. Each strand of pasta spends up to 12 hours inside what's essentially an industrial steam room. In the first hour, gentle heat removes roughly 10% of the moisture. Then, the spaghetti passes through three additional heating phases, gradually reducing the moisture content down to 12%, the ideal level for long-term storage without the need for preservatives. It's a delicate balancing act. Too much heat, and the pasta cracks. Too little, and it retains moisture, shortening its shelf life. That's why temperature and drying time are adjusted with pinpoint accuracy, ensuring the strands stay firm and flexible with just the right chew when cooked. The factory houses 120 separate drying chambers, each tailored for different pasta shapes, from tiny elbows to long spaghetti strands. Even the thickness of the noodle matters. Spaghettini, the thinner variety, measures less than 1.7 millimeters in diameter, while traditional spaghetti is closer to 2.0 millimeters. Thicker strands take longer to cook and have a firmer bite, and that affects how they hold sauces and deliver flavor.
After 12 hours of drying, the spaghetti isn't quite ready for packaging, not just yet. It's still warm, and before it can be boxed up, it needs to cool down slowly and evenly to room temperature. This careful transition is key to preserving the pasta's structure and texture. The spaghetti is transferred into a cooling chamber, a sealed system equipped with powerful fans and tiered conveyor belts. Inside, a stream of cool, dry air circulates constantly, gently drawing out the residual heat from each strand. Once the cooling phase is complete, the spaghetti reaches the final stretch of the production line, precision cutting. Traditionally, Italian spaghetti measured around 20 inches in length. But today, to better fit modern cookware and consumer preferences, most strands are trimmed down to a more practical 10 inches. The entire process is fully automated. Sheets of golden pasta glide smoothly and rhythmically through a high-precision cutting system, where blades slice each strand to exact specifications, down to the millimeter. The motion is almost choreographed, an industrial ballet of synchronized machinery. Every strand is cut clean, uniform, and camera-ready, perfect in both form and function. From here, it's on to the final stage, packaging and shipping ready to land in markets, cupboards, and ultimately on dinner plates across the globe. Even after the spaghetti is dried and seemingly finished, it's still not off the hook. Samples are subjected to a series of durability tests. The strands are bent, stretched, and stressed to simulate real-world handling. The final step in the spaghetti-making journey is the packaging area, where precision engineering and high-speed automation take over. Here, computer-controlled systems calculate the exact amount of pasta needed for each package, ensuring every portion meets strict weight standards. Spaghetti strands slide down stainless steel chutes, are gathered into mobile hoppers, and then funneled into bags with near-perfect accuracy. This cutting-edge packaging machine can fill 10 bags, each weighing 9 pounds, in just one minute. And when running at full speed, it cranks out up to 60 bags per minute. That blistering pace is essential to keep up with growing global demand. Each year, over 1 million tons of pasta are produced, packed, and prepped for shipment to more than 100 countries worldwide. From the distribution center in Italy, roughly 100 tons of pasta leave the facility every single day, with 65% bound for export. That's enough to serve up nearly 30 million plates of spaghetti every day. And that's the full journey of how spaghetti is made from humble durum wheat to a neatly packed product, ready to hit the plate. Do you find yourself reaching for spaghetti often? What's your favorite way to enjoy it? With classic tomato sauce, a rich creamy Alfredo, or maybe a creative twist of your own? Share your go-to spaghetti recipe in the comments. We'd love to hear how you make it your own. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so you won't miss any of our upcoming deep dives into the world of food production. Thanks for watching. See you next time.